Let's have a look at mutually exclusive events. Now mutually exclusive events are parts that are directly opposite each other and they don't hold any common parts or any simultaneous parts. Now example, one example would be maybe a girl and a boy. A girl can definitely not be a boy. A girl is a girl and similarly boy cannot be a girl so therefore they are opposite each other, they have no common parts where they can be both so therefore they are mutually exclusive. In a coin, heads or tails, they are also mutually exclusive. They can be one or the other, but they can't be both. So therefore, they are mutually exclusive. So, I'll show you some more examples later on as we go through the questions. And you can see over here, I've got the main rule of mutually exclusive events in terms of their probability. So you can see that the probability of A and B, oh sorry, A or B, the, you remember the U-shaped one is or, the probability of A or B is the probability of event A plus the probability of event B. And that is it. And you can see that the probability of A and B is zero. Why is it zero? It's because they don't have any common parts. So therefore, the common parts where it could be A and B is zero. So therefore, the probability of A or B is simply the, the sum of these two events. Makes sense, guys? So just trying to remember this for me. And we'll have a look at more in two. So mutually exclusive events. You can see in question one, they give us the event of A, B, and C. Now, A consists of three numbers, B and C as well. They consist of three different numbers as well. Now, you can see in part A, they're asking us, are events A and B mutually exclusive? Now, if you have a look at A and B, A consists of one, two, three, B consists of four, five, six. Just tell me, guys, are there any common parts or are any of the numbers in A same as any of the numbers in B? No. So this one, yes, we say it's mutually exclusive. They are mutually exclusive. And the reason is they don't hold any common numbers or common parts. That's pretty much the reason why. So if you think of the same dimension, have a look at B. It's asking us whether the events B and C are mutually exclusive. Now B, it's 4, 5, 6. C, it's 3, 7, 8. Again, are there any same numbers that occur in both events? They're all different, aren't they? So that's, yes, they are mutually exclusive. And again, because they do not hold any common numbers or common parts. Now, part C, they're asking us, are events A and C mutually exclusive? A and C, these ones, A is 1, 2, 3. C is 3, 7, 8. Now, I hope you guys already catch this. Um, you can see that 3 here. They occur in both event A and also they occur in event C. So they do have common parts. So this one is no, they are not mutually exclusive because they do have common um, parts in both events. That's why they are not mutually exclusive. Get the idea, guys? Hopefully you understood what mutually exclusive um, events actually mean. So now let's try some actual questions involving um, some numbers. If you have a look at question two, it says a dice is rolled with A representing the um, event of an odd number, obtaining an odd number, and B is the event of obtaining even numbers. So we want to find first the probability of event A. Now probability of event A is pretty much all the odd numbers, isn't it? They tell us that the event A consists of all the um, possibilities of obtaining an odd number. So in a regular die, guys, how many odd numbers are there? Well, you guys should know that there's 1, 3, and 5. 1, 3, and 5 are the only numbers in a die. And in a die, there are 6 numbers, 1 through to 6, isn't it? So the 3 odd numbers out of the 6 total numbers would be our probability. And you can simplify that as half. So it's half. Now B, they're asking us to find the probability of event B this time. Now they tell us that the probability of event B is obtaining even numbers. Now again, tell me guys, which numbers in a die are even? You guys should know that's 2, 4, 6. 2, 4, and 6 are the only even numbers in a die, and again, it's out of all the 6 numbers in a die. So, the 3 even numbers out of the 6 total numbers would be our probability, which simply gives us half as our probability of probability of event B. Okay, guys? Now, if you have a look at C, this time they're asking us to find the probability of A and B. Yeah? So, A and B, which is pretty much where it could be A and B together, the common part. Now guys, in a die, through one, from 1 through to 6, which one of them are both odd and even? Think logically guys, can an even number be odd or can an odd number be even? Definitely not. So we say none of the numbers out of the 6 are both A and B. So 
so therefore it's zero. Zero divided by six is zero. So therefore the probability is the uh, probability is zero because they don't have any common parts. They cannot be the same um, at the same time. So now this leads to our part D. Are the events mutually exclusive? Are the events of A and B mutually exclusive? Yes, they are because we just figured out that the probability of them being common, A and B, is zero. So they don't have any common parts, they cannot be the same at the same time, so therefore, yes, they are mutually exclusive. It's one or the other. Okay, let's move on to another question. Let's look at question three. It's another dice question. Two fair dice are rolled, so this time two dice are involved. Now, A is obtaining a number less than four on the first die. Now, B is obtaining a number greater than four on the second die. Now what I'm going to do for you is give you a little table of values. This maybe can represent the first die and this could probably represent the second die or, vi or vice versa, whatever you prefer. So I've drawn two um, way table that has first die, second die and I put in the values. Now you might think this is too time consuming but if you try it, it doesn't take too much time. So you can draw it if you like when you're doing these questions and it will help you much easier to get the answers really, really accurately. So. First of all, the first, first question is asking us to find the probability of A. Now, if you have a look at the A, event A, it's pretty much the, the event of obtaining a number less than 4 on the first die. So if I call this the first die, if it's less than 4, it will pretty much be all of these values. Can you see that the first die? Here, the first die will have an event number of 4, so we don't want that. So these are the numbers that have the first die of being less than 4. So if you count them up, it's 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3 by 6, so 3 times 6 will give us 18. So the probability will be 18 out of the total number of events, which is 6 by 6, which gives us 36. And you can probably simplify that, which is half. That's how we get that one. Now, second one is asking us to find the probability of B. Now read it, guys. B is the event of obtaining a number greater than 4 on the second die. If you have a look on our table, can you guys maybe highlight the ones that have uh, numbers greater than a 4 on the second die? Well, you can see the up to here are the numbers that are less than 4. So it must be 5 or 6 on the second die. So it must be just these two columns here that have 5 or 6 on the second die. It doesn't really matter what happens on the first, as long as the second die has a number greater than 4. And if you count it up, guys, it's 2 by 6. So it must be 12 out of the total of 36. 6 by 6 is the total, isn't it? Which gives us 36. And guys, just simplify that for me, and you can get 1 over 3. Just divide top and bottom by 12, and then you get 1 over 3 as our simplified probability. Now C, find the probability of A and B. Now A and B means the parts that they hold simultaneously, the common parts. That, are, that, mean, that means we want them to have the first number of being less than 4, on the first die, and we want to also to have a number greater than 4 on the second die. We want both to happen. Now guys, you can maybe highlight the event of the first, so event of A, and maybe highlight that event of B again, and you can see that common part, the overlapping part, and it's these parts here. See how I've highlighted those? This part, see the numbers are, numbers in the first die are less than 4 and the numbers in the second die are greater than 4 and that's the only part. Nothing else um, that we haven't highlighted consists of having both events. So you can count that up guys. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's 6 out of the 36 which gives us 1 over 6 as a simplified form. Just divide top and bottom by 6 for me guys. Now part D is finally asking us, so are events A and B mutually exclusive? What do you guys think? Well they do have common parts. See how the probability of A and B exists? Therefore, no, they cannot be mutually exclusive. If there's any common parts at all, they are not mutually exclusive. So that's the idea of mutually exclusive events. 